This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Squarespace, Bex, and Dead Space. Only the dead survive. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Hack 5. I'm Matt Lestock. I'm John Christian. And it's time for your weekly dose of techno lust. Dude, I'm so stoked. We're totally high res now. <laughs> Darren, obviously, as you can see, has had way too much candy from the 30 pound basket of candy that now resides in our hallway. I'm totally picking at it. I am gone for, in Miami for a week, come home, and there is a <laughs> whoa. Okay, just. And then there was all these cobs that came. 30 pounds totally of candy <laughs> in my hallway. We're high res. And we're high res. <laughs> okay. You've got 10 seconds. Oh. Are you better? Mm -mm. <laughs> Can we start the show now? <laughs> I'm totally good with that. Whatever. <laughs> right. so, so this... As I've said, we're high res. We are high res. Is that? Um, a lot quicker than we we had anticipated going. Uh, you know, HD. Um, it's it's high res. We're we're making uh, uh, an assumption that we will be HD, but if we're not, at least it's high res SD. Yeah, yeah. It's probably like the most beautiful SD you've ever seen. So it's for like 1080i, everything's HDMI now. No, no more of that composite stuff. Everything. Oh, it's so beautiful. And and we'll show you the pictures of the console and the beautiful new setup and it's all thanks to you guys and I'm totally stoked Did you, like we're, we're gonna have to like scroll the credits with like all oh, the dude dude everybody ah, you got us there it's sweet I didn't get it out of my system I can tell so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one over okay mm -hmm. cool we want to thank everybody who went ahead and made this possible by going to hack5.org slash stickers everybody who has purchased a sticker donated you know, every kind word that we got saying we can't wait for you guys to go HD, so here's a couple bucks. This is all brought to you by you. Yeah. Okay. Um, we basically had a, a plan to go HD first of the new year. Well, I mean, our original plan involved a $11,000 mixing board by Ederol. And after talking to Dave Randolph, the guy that engineered the Revision 3 Studios, totally helped us put together a HD on the hacker level. We're talking, it's, it's not ghetto fabulous or anything. We're still talking a couple of grand here, but it's way more like hacked together the way I like. Uh, we're still, this is still like hack five and HD beta. Because one, we're, we're learning the new production process. Right. And another thing is we're borrowing Paul's Mac Pro, which is not completely pimped. Mac Pros can get super pimped, it turns out. Yeah. This one's only like two gigs to the pimpness. And it yeah. probably needs a little, like eight gigs to the pimp. He's like mini pimp. Yeah. He needs to become big, gi ginormous well, pimp he's, with he's a big feather. Well, he's also not going to lend us his Mac Pro forever. So we're probably going to eventually have to get our own Mac Pro. But we're on, our, we're on our way there. And in the meantime, enjoy the high res. And cheers to you guys. Cheers to you guys. Kachink. You got one right there. There we go. Yeah. All right. So what's going on, man? Um, back I, from Miami. I just got back from Miami. I was working my ass off. Um, Literally lost a couple pounds. No, um, <laughs> was down there for work. I had a good time. I just worked just incredibly too much. But I'm back now, so I'm really excited to be back in the groove. You guys just got back from Daycon. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the show. Totally had a lot of fun. Went down there with Paul. Met a bunch of great people. It was a fun con, and uh, and now it's good to be back in the studio and uh, playing some video games. Yeah, we've got Warsaw, Warsaw going on in the background. You guys asked us for an open source game, something that you did not have to, uh, you know, have a Windows machine for or anything like that. So what we went ahead and did, we went ahead and set up a Warsaw server. Warsaw is an open source game that you can download for Linux, Windows, and Mac. And uh, it, it, if you've ever played the game 13, the graphics are quite similar. Um, but um, a bunch of people having fun in the server, don't know what's going on with it. Uh, Darren's back, and they're talking. So <laughs> we're up, dude. I'm, I'm. Oh, that, that's what it was. We were waiting for ready up. Yeah. Ah, ready up. 
There we go. All right, so what do we got for today's show, Darren? Sweet. So we're uh, going to be talking about DOSBox. Chris Gerling is down here. We're going to be doing some, uh, uh, some more packet sniffing. We're actually going into the structure of a packet, uh, I believe using some toys as props. That's going to be fun. Okay. And then, of course, next week, getting our hands dirty, actually doing um, some analysis of the packets and showing you how to create custom filters and stuff in, um, in Wireshark. Nice. Should be a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah. And, um, and we got answers to all your questions and a whole bunch of other fun Rehack 5 stuff coming up later on. Yeah, for Rehack 5, those of you that don't know, uh, basically taking your comments and answering them. Questions and all that stuff and be like, oh, wow, we, we have fans and we should reply to them. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> exactly. And, and kicking over yeah. to the girl that's constantly reminding us that we need to pay attention to you guys. It's yeah. Shannon Morse, the community development yeah. wizard. That, that would be What's me. going on, DOSBox girl? Yeah, that'd be me. I wanted to tell you guys about this program called DOSBox. It's basically this software that emulates an IBM PC compatible computer running MS-DOS. It's pretty much intended for games, although there are a couple of other things you can do with this program, but I'm not going to tell you about those today. Uh, you can run this on Windows, you can run it on Mac, on Linux, you can even run it on your PSP or your Palm, your Palm Centro, so it's a really good software program if you want to play all those old school games that you can't play on your computer these days because your computer is a little bit too fast for it. One of the really cool things about this is that it simulates modems and IPX networks so you can play all those multiplayer games that you really really miss like Duke Nukem 3D and Doom. Back here I have Rise of the Triad so another nice thing about DOSBox is that you can capture screenshots and video footage with just a couple of clicks. So over here with Monkey Island, I created this photo a little while back of an image from Monkey Island. So I can create my own little tutorial online for all my friends that need tutorials. Because I don't use those. I never use those. Anyway, if you want to check out DOSBox, go to DOSBox.com. I definitely suggest checking out their forums as well as the wiki article. There's tons of really good games listed there that you can, you can check out for yourself. See if you like it. So, speaking about Duke Nukem 3D and all the old school, I wanted to tell you guys our trivia for this week. In Duke Nukem 3D, what movie is playing at the Million Dollar Theater in the first level of LA Meltdown? If you're the first one to get this right, answer it in one of the forums of your choice, either Revision 3 or the Hack 5 forums. And if you're the first one to get it right, we'll, we'll send you some Hack 5 swag. Instead of just sending you some stickers like we usually do, we're also going to include a Pronobozo CD. This is zero equals one equals everything. If you've heard of it, I think you have. We'd also like to thank our sponsor, Bex Beer, very, very much for sponsoring us. As you know already, Bex Beer is the number one German export beer. So pick up your Bex right now and look at that key on the front of it. See that iconic graphic? It's from the coat of arms of Bremen, Germany, which is the founding city where Bex Beer came from. And while you're enjoying your Bex Beer, Check out Bex Key Club. It's for all the loyal drinkers of Bex, and it's open to any of you guys. They have special events, free gear, and exclusive content. So sign up at bexkeyclub.com and unlock the possibilities. Last but not least, I wanted to show you guys this really great wallpaper. It's by Razor512. And if you guys have any cool wallpapers that you want to share with us and you'd like to get up on the show, send them over to our forum and put them in the community images. We just started this, and we think it's a really great idea, so check it out. And now, we're gonna take a break. So Chris, last time you were down here, we were talking about some packet sniffing. You gave us a high-level overview of kind of, you know, the terms, the terminology, the tools, um, and why we would wanna do this. So now you're back, let's do some, some getting into the packet structure, because we just glossed over that last time. Okay, um, we're gonna kind of go into the um, to Wireshark here and actually bring it up and, and show you how to capture uh, you know, some packets and, um, and dissect from there them. And, and dissect them. Okay, so, so Wireshark, of course, awesome network analyzing tool. Yep. So let's go ahead and fire it up. What, what's right. involved in this? So we have, uh, I have this, just the default screen right here. And uh, we're just going to, I'm not going to go into all these little menu options for now. Uh, we're just going to go to Capture and Interfaces. So this is where you can select all the interfaces that you have. Um, and you can see that there are, right here, there's packets coming across this. Okay, so there's our uh, actual mm -hmm. 
uh, Ethernet card. Mm -hmm. it's, and yeah, it's just the Microsoft. It's IP. just saying Microsoft because it's sure. just a driver. Right? Okay. So if I hit start and I pull up, uh, let me pull up an Internet Explorer browser and I'll go to hack 5org Ooh, IE, really? Well, uh, okay, it's just, okay, this I just understand. Makes, to make it simple, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. Um, I didn't feel like waiting for I hear Firefox. You. And I don't have Chrome on this laptop yet, so. <laughs> no <Damn>. excuses, man. <laughs> Let's just go, and get, go ahead and get into that package. All right. So, so we've got we, Wireshark. So we pulled it up, and now I'm going to stop it. There's put this little button up here um, so we don't get any more uh, packets. And um, you can just kind of scroll around here, and you can see um, we're going to go up here to this Git request. Um, this is when we I actually so let, let's so Wireshark. It's an open source mm -hmm. application. It's cross platform. You can get it on Windows, Mac, Linux. Mm -hmm. You can use it to see what's going across the wire. Mm -hmm. We just did it to capture the uh, the eight, the traffic when we went to the um, when you pulled up Internet Explorer and went to hack5.org, yep. and now we can actually see everything that goes on to actually make that connection happen. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take a look at one of those uh, packets and, and take a look and dissect that so that we have a deep understanding of how that packet is formed. Because I know last time we totally glossed over this. Yes. And once we have that understanding, you tell me next time, uh, on, on part two next three. week, yeah, part, part three, three, sorry, part three next week, <laughs> we're actually going to be doing some ad advanced uh, stuff with Wireshark, yep. like some custom filters and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yep. All right. So let's pull up our packet. Uh, right, I think so you already have one from a yep, previous I do. instance. So I just wanted to demonstrate, you know, opening it. Um, so let me uh, open this guy up here. And uh, here is our, uh, in fact, let me scroll up. And uh, so here is our internet protocol right here um, in Wireshark. And so this is an individual packet. We've already mm -hmm. taken a look last time at the frames uh, that put that together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're not going to worry about the, the, the layer one, two stuff right now. We're just going to focus on internet protocol and TCP because that's where the meat of the stuff TCP is. TCP IP, sure. So, um, so we have, um, what, what do we have here? We well, have we've got some <laughs> bricks here <laughs> that will kind of help us explain <laughs> this because there are several different layers to putting together our packets. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and start with internet protocol. So what is the first piece of the puzzle for, for an IP the, header for, okay. for putting together the IP. This this guy right here is the version. This is this is what tells you whether it's IPv4 or IPv6. It's much. probably just going to be 4 in our case. Yeah, most of the time it's going to be 4. All right, what's next? Um, after the version, uh, we have header length. And this tells you how long this IP header is actually going to be. Um, it's usually 20 bytes. Okay, so and if so it's more or less than we know that something went wrong, yep. let's retransmit, let's yep. fix it somehow. Okay. Exactly. Um, after that, you have type. Uh, that has to, it's like ty um, type of service, and that mostly deals with uh, network congestion, ECN stuff like that. So okay. we don't really get too in the weeds with that. All right. What's next? After that, we have total length. That's the entire length of the of the packet. So the entire the length header. of the packet, header data, header and everything. data, everything. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. And again, that's just more overhead, making sure that when we, you know, mm -hmm. get this packet and assemble it together, that uh, that everything matches up. Mm -hmm. All right. Identification. Uh, this is just a. F it's just part of the part of the sequence numbers and everything. That's uh, you know identifies sure. the packet. Not that um, interesting. It's not that interesting. Uh, after that, we have flags. Flags. And this is uh, for the IP header. This is your fragmentation flag. Don't fragment. Fragment. I think there's a third. Now, why would we fragment? Why would we not? Uh, we fragment, and I'm gonna actually set this here. Okay. Our, we fragment. Uh, when we know that the packet's going to be larger than the maximum transmis transmission unit, uh, which is typically 1500, uh, well, 1460 plus overhead. Okay. Um, so, and that if your packet's going to be larger than that, then you want to fragment it so that you can put it right, back together. Right, because there's no big, like, Hack no. 5 episode 408 no. packet. No. It's got to be no. broken up. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still but, uh, want the, hack, the jumbo <laughs> Hack 5 packet, and you're yeah. telling me something about jumbo frame. That's, we'll, we'll get there. That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> so, that would actually We're just expand touch the on MTU. It. But okay, so we if bigger than fifteen hundred or like you said fourteen fourteen sixty is the norm. This is the, the normal sure. default. Sure. Just for some, just leave some leeway for some overhead. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. After the those, we have the fragmentation offset, which goes right, so right here. If we do fragment, we need to yep. know at what point do we offset those? Exactly. At, where do we make our slices? Is mm -hmm. if it's a so large pizza, is that sixteen slices? Mm -hmm. Is that? And I'm slice slices? seven of sixteen. Gotcha. So, so All right. Like What's next? TTL. Time to live. Uh, Explain to me what time to live, I mean, I know, but a lot yeah, of people may not people be familiar with time okay. to live. 
Time to live is how long you have to live after you watch this segment. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's not a threat. Not a threat. Please don't arrest me. Um, so time to live is is how many hops that packet's going to go. And hop is uh, when the packet goes from one when device to, to you, another. That's, that's yeah. Okay, so like when I order my bags from the the. The barmaid. the barmaid, <laughs> right? I have to order that. I have to ask my waitress. The waitress needs to talk to the barmaid. The barmaid gets it from the cooler. Yep. That's that's three hops right there. That's three hops. Okay. So with hops. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> three hops with hops. You can't you can't get that kind of advertising no. anywhere else. No. So <laughs> so what kind of um, premium, by the way? So, so the time to live is is that how many hops, or is that in a specific um, an actual amount of physical time? It's um, hops, so um, it's not an actual, it's not a time, it's not like okay. 30 seconds. So if I was trying to get the beer from the barmaid, from the cooler, through the waitress, mm -hmm. and my time to live was two, probably would stay thirsty for the rest of the night, right? Yeah, you wouldn't be drinking any Bex. Okay. Um, <laughs> What's a typical time to live on the internet? Um, it depends on the operating system. I mean, I, I used, I've seen um, 128, I think is... One, I think that's the max okay. time to live for a, for a lot of different things. You, if between Unix and Linux and, and Windows and, and, and everything, there's yeah. different ones that help you. And what, depending on what that is, you can identify the OS. Cause well, unless you obfuscate it, that's a fun that's, another yeah. story. For, uh, I remember you know, with, with generically. Windows, <laughs> I remember with Windows 95. Uh, I think it was 95, actually didn't have long enough TTL that mm -hmm. when a lot of people were getting online, they were getting, you know, router, 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 mm -hmm. router, trying to get to their destination and then dropped because the, in the registry, it was, just, anyway. It just didn't work. Interesting. All right. So, so after, our after our TTL, we have our protocol and that's going to tell you whether it's TCP, protocol. UDP, GTP, uh, there's a million protocols and right. we're going to focus on TCP. Just TCP. So right. That's TCP. After, uh, after the protocol, we have our header checksum. It's just a CRC error check. It just, you know, helps make the... the we're going to hash the whole thing and exactly. say it should equal this, and if it doesn't, yep. talk to us because if it doesn't, then you wrong. need to get the packet again. So. All right. Um, after that, source address. This is where we actually start getting into, you know. So our source <laughs> address is ourselves. Yep. In in the case of us, you know, mm -hmm. or your or your victim, if you will, your target, your mark, mm -hmm. if you're a man in the middle. If yes, yes. Okay. Um, and after that is your destination, which would be, I guess, me. Okay. Um, and then, um, or, or the barmaid, because I want to get the beer. Or the barmaid, yeah. All right. Um, so, and and is this where we talk about the different ports, or is that that's in TCP? with the TCP header? All right. So, so we'll so get there. So that's so how this, many pieces. This is this, and there's one more that can mm -hmm. go on top optionally, and that's an options field. Believe it or not, optionally, ah. yeah, optionally options. Um, <laughs> and is that where so we would do special that's, stuff? That's that's where there's about four or five different things in the IP header where you can specify, like no ops. Um, you can put some no ops in there to pad the packet to a certain size. Um, uh, debugging, mostly debugging stuff. It's, okay. it, there's a there's a couple of network congestion things, but super awesome geeky stuff. Yeah, real you know debug stuff. If, okay. you're, if you're if you're doing that stuff, you're probably a CCIE network engineer, and you're making more money than. than and and then stuff. you're probably not watching this program. <laughs> you're probably not you're watching like, this program. <laughs> the <laughs> colorful <laughs> IP <laughs> packet is probably be, is a little yeah, this, beneath this you. Is, that's uh, cool. But but uh, this gives so me a good understanding of that's the first thing. That's your header, yep. and then we've got a whole bunch of more bricks underneath. That's but before we can. That, that's just to get our IP on. That's IP. Now we need to talk to talk about, like you said, right I here. I think it was the green one. Our protocol. Yep. I think. Yeah. Um, let's talk about our protocol. We're talking about TCP here, not UDP, not any of those mm -hmm. others. TCP. Yeah, we're not going to focus on on UDP right now. Mm -hmm. um, so TCP. We're going to talk about the TCP header. All right. So. Let's and I'm going to uh, quickly go to here and actually just pull this up on the screen, so that we can look and see what this looks like. So here's all the checks and flags. So now we're going to go through. Sure, pull up the first. Okay, so there we go. Port. So the, the first thing in a TCP header is the source port, and here here he is right here, source port. Um, so this, and we're gonna, I'm gonna uh, give me destination port too, because I'm gonna talk right. about both at the same time. Hi, so. Source port. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that. So this is this is me, this mm -hmm. or you, trying to get the beer from the barmaid. Just don't knock your mic again. Oops. That's yeah. cool. All right. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah. The this viewers is, were like, ah. So this is uh, this is the this is you trying to get the beer from the sure. barmaid. So bar here's the barmaid, Great. and here's you. Great. The barmaid is the destination port. All right. Now I want to talk to her. Mm -hmm. How do I talk to her? All right. The barmaid mm -hmm. is only listening for t to get beers. Communication, sure. So, so like port in this case, port eighty. That's all. That's it. Port 80. That's all, right, all my she cares server about. Web server barmaid. I want to talk exactly. to her on port 80. 
What about me? What about I, my source port? You're, you can't be poor eighty. Why not? You can't be the barmaid. You what? can't be you and the barmaid at the same time. That's I understand. Just, you know, that yeah. would be that would be very that'd weird. Be, yeah. Be okay. So I have um, to have a different source. So port. you're just some random Joe Schmo that wants a beer. So All right. That's, that's what that number based. It's a randomized number above right. 1024. Uh, 1024. Yep. 1024 and below being, of course, the old you know the, the arcade, the, the legacy, yeah. the the originals, yeah. the hardcore. Yeah. Which is few. very. It's very. There's, yeah, there's almost no. Nobody follows it anymore. But everything through eighty, baby. So um, um, now I understand that, uh, and I guess we, that's a total another conversation about when it comes to network address translation between mm -hmm. your I don't know in, in low level terms you're like links this router yeah, it, to your it, it, you would be like going PC through band. multiple layers yeah. to, but to get the same effect. Just to make it easy, we've mm -hmm. got a source port, we've got a destination port. So now that we can speak, even though we're not on the same numbers, what after this you'll get a sequence number. This sequence is going to help. Number. This is going to help track you know where in the conversation things are. You know, it's just. Just tells you where you are in the package. Sounds sequence. good to me. Sequence. It's like a map. Um, after that, you're gonna have your acknowledgement number, and uh, I acknowledge you. And this has a lot to do with. Um, in fact, it's right here. Acknowledgement number. Right acknowledgement number one. Yep. So this is the first packet after the. Sounds good. So, data offset. Um, and doesn't always show up, but it's just um, for if you are uh, fragmentation and other things where you have data, just a pad, you know, just to offset so everything. Uh, Great. Lines up right. The next one is reserved. What is it? Just it's. There it's, wasn't. Yeah, it's just kind of. It's just in the RFC. It's, they were it's like. It's kind of in the RFC. It's just from you know experimentation. You know, just. We all did that in college. Yeah, experimentation. All right. Um, <laughs> this is the flags. This is the this is a jumbo monster one right here. All right. So this, the is, flags. this covers all the flags from CWR, ECE, uh, er, ERG, ACK, I'm push, here in reset. alphabet soup. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where you're sin. Okay, the ones that are the sin, the ACK, fin, sin and ACK. You know. Sin and ACK. Uh, sin, sin, ACK. There we go. All right. <laughs> but uh, it's a three way. So yeah. anyway, whatever. <laughs> But the ECWCHRB, what okay. is all this? Uh, the CWR and the ECE mainly just deal with network congestion. Um, they, they, that's about all they really. So do. really, just high-level routers are looking at these, yeah. saying, and then the people that are programming those are mm -hmm. again with the. They're not usually. You're not usually going to see these things set. Okay. So that's cool. Not very, not very often. What's so. next? After that, uh, we have a checksum, which is again just like the IP header. Make sure everything came out correctly. CRC. Um, after that, we have an urge pointer. If the urge flag is set, this will tell um, where you know to put the that packet at the top of the pr the priority for mm -hmm. to process at first. All right. And then after that is the optional options again, which is not a required option. but it's part of it. So options, the same deal as before. A lot All right. of debug stuff. So those are the headers mm -hmm. for IP and TCP, and that's and if you and as as we were going along, you can see in Wireshark. Where they all fall and what and what it looks like. This is a nice little pretty view because it takes all this hex and actually breaks it out in, in for you. If you're normally taking a uh, like a certification exam or something, you're going to have to take these hex blocks and, and and do this yourself. No fun. So <laughs> yeah, and we've got links to charts and, and graphs yeah, and, and tables that explain all these. But basically, you, we've got your IP. Mm -hmm. Your TCP. Then under that, we've got our TCP. Yep. And then, and then. We data. actually have our data, Here, our payload. Okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. So, so all yeah. of this, all of there this, <laughs> just to send a bit. Just to send this guy right but here. But since the MTU is big enough, we can actually send a couple more yeah, bits. Yeah, we'll send so, some more images. So what's under this? So what's the next layer? I mean, once we get past the IP and the TCP, then we're into what? FTP? I'm well, sorry. we're going back. We're, oh, 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 oh. Darren's going <laughs> to... We're safe now. <laughs> all right, anyway. So, the, the, so, yeah, the kindergarten blocks are gone. <laughs> so I'm going back so to preschool planning. So we've graduated. Um, so we've we've gone um, backward. Well, from the bottom up. So yeah. we went frames and everything first, and then uh, the IP TCP. After this stuff is when uh, in the stack you would either be uh, building this into an image and presenting it on a browser, and you go through all your your layers up to the application layer, or you would be encapsulating it down. And in 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 our packet here, we're yep. just looking at. You know, hypertext. This is D, this is the de encapsulation. Yeah, this is well, this is not de encapsulation. Yeah, this is a de encapsulation. Okay. Where we are, where I requested that image and, and the web page, and it and gave it to me. And now we can actually see the HTTP exactly. traffic. So all of that was encapsulated in TCP, mm -hmm. and that was encapsulated in IP. Yep. And then that was shoved through a network interface, and yep. like we talked about in the last. And it part. goes down to the layer two. And, and then, then we start talking one. about copper and microwaves, but yeah, no fun. Okay, no. cool. So, 
So I think we have a good understanding of, 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 of the how high level, it's actually made. how it's built, and now uh, you're going to return next week, mm -hmm. and we're going to do some fun stuff and actually get our hands dirty yeah, so, so using Wireshark. Yeah, so I've, we've, we've, you've seen Wireshark up all this time, and now we're actually going to do some advanced, uh, some advanced so stuff. Filtering. It, so filtering. So now that we know what to look for, we can tell Wireshark, hey, only we show can me get the rid good of stuff. Multicast, broadcast, MAC address. We can only look at, if we want. Just show me the fun content. Exactly. Yeah. Just show the us the good stuff. Instant Messenger conversations. IRC passwords. The, uh, the IMAP <laughs> email. All the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Chris, excellent, excellent stuff. I am assuming Synac. Chris Gerling uh. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, chrisgerling.com, the place to be to, uh, to see all the show notes on this bad boy. I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of food, let's head over to Shannon, see what's going on with this week's LAN party. All right, this month's LAN party is Battlefield 2. We're playing on November 1st, and you can join us at game.hack5.org. Or if you're not really feeling like getting into the game for the day, you can always just hang out with us on hack5.org, where we're going to have the cam set up so you can check us out. Uh, filming, of course. This month's LAN party is sponsored by Dead Space. Dead Space is EA's first survival horror game and an original IP created by hand-picked team of horror fanatics. It's a terrifying game. It's an experience that deserves its M rating. To survive in Dead Space, it's all about the strategic dismemberment of your enemies set in a horrific sci-fi atmosphere. You're going to explore the gritty bowels of the damaged USG Ishimura, a deep space mining ship, and its amazing zero-G environment while you employ this entirely unique way to blast your way through your enemies. We haven't had a chance to play Dead Space yet, but we've heard amazing things from the TRS crew when they played it at E3. In fact, Dead Space recently won the Game Critics Award Best of E3 2008 for Best Action Adventure Game, and it's in stores now. So visit deadspace.ea.com for more details. And now we're going to take a break. I'd like to thank Version X from our Hack5 forums for this next suggestion. This program is called Alice that I'm going to be talking about today. It's a very high level programming that's similar to Java. Now it's not meant to replace your Java or your C++ or whatever you're using now. What this is meant for is for your younger brother or your cousin or your niece or even your mom or your grandmother who are interested in programming but have never even seen anything like that before. It's a very user-friendly, drag-and-drop kind of interface. It's meant to introduce the object-oriented programming. It's very easy to use. As you can see, it's a very user-friendly, drag-and-drop scenario. Um, these are my functions. I can drag those in. I have methods. And it's, it's very object-oriented, the way that it reads. It, it reads very similar to Java. So this is an example that came with Alice that I'm going to play for you right now. We're going to see how it works. That's a mouse initiated function. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. As you can see, it's a basic storytelling, which is meant to encourage people who would never really be interested in programming because it's, it's pretty and it's attractive and it, it draws people in. All right, so now we're going we're to add something. We're going to add a new event. Let's add event for when a key is typed. We scroll down here. When any key, we're going to change to the enter key, do, we'll have him do hey baby, which is a whole nother function. That's where he raises his eyes. So that's good. All we have to do is go and hit play, click to start. Okay, I'm going to do my enter key. See how he raised his eyes? We'll do it again. So. It's very simple. It's very user friendly. You can go in and change this all around. There's so much you can do with it. There's even a flight simulator where you can do where you can fly through different rings. It's really cool. Um, so again, I'm not recommending this for you guys who are already very into programming. You obviously know what you're doing. But this is for people who aren't so familiar with programming. It's a great way to get them interested in it and intrigued. So for more tips like this, check out the Hack5 forums. <laughs> So Darren, you just came back from Daycon up in Ohio. Did you have a good time? I had a blast, dude. It was so much fun. I went up there with Paul and uh, they treated us really well. It's 
kind of geared like a lot different than a lot of conferences. Mm -hmm. They should really change the name to Two Day Con because that's really what it is. Um, unfortunately, we missed some of the stuff on Friday, which was uh, where they did Packet Wars, which mm -hmm. is a really cool kind of network game, which is, um, if you're familiar with some of the network games that they do at, uh, at something like DEF CON, which is like uh, Capture the Flag. Right. Um, this is kind of similar to that, but they do like territory type stuff where you try to like get into a server and then you want to hold that server for as long as possible. But as the game progresses, different things happen on the network. Like all of a sudden, like firewalls go down and the different like servers pop up hmm. and uh, there's different teams. So like you and I could be like Team Hack 5 and go and compete and then like against the different groups that are there. Right. Um, looked like a lot of fun. Totally next time I go, we'll remember that it's two day con, not day con, and uh, make it up for that. Right. But, uh, but no, we had a blast. When we got there, um, the way that they do it is one track, and everything's just like back to back to back, and it's like a lot of good stuff that's just like crammed together. So there isn't a whole lot of time, like, you know, hallway time at most mm -hmm. conferences is like some of the best time. And uh, th there's not so much of that because as soon as one's done, it's like, bam, there's another segment. Right. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to, to get some of the interviews that I wanted. Uh, this one in particular that I really wanted to get, and I guess I can just explain to you what I saw there, was um, these two guys from ERNW, security firm out in Germany, um, Simon uh, Rich, and I hope I'm not uh, mangling his name here, but Daniel Menda talked about uh, some interesting evolutions in botnets and actually using the uh, Microsoft, uh, what the peer-to-peer -peer technology, uh, PNRP, uh, it's peer name resolution protocol. Okay. In conjunction with fast flux. You ever heard of fast flux? No. Okay, it's so like how botnet people uh, quickly change their DNS so that by the time you've gone ahead and blocked that DNS, they've gone ahead and pointed it somewhere else. Right. So, uh, couple PRNP uh, with fast flux, and then start talking about, um, and then Simon started talking about ways that you can actually tunnel information. I mean, this is nothing like crazy new, but they put together a tool for tunneling a lot of information through DNS. Okay. Which, on most corporate firewalls, even on some of the most locked down firewalls, you can still get DNS queries through. Yep. And if you can get some, if you can get some packets to your destination and it, you can get some packets back as a response to your DNS query, then uh, all of a sudden you can tunnel traffic through it. Um, they, the best they got was 24 bytes per second. Yeah. So, not really going to be playing, you know, anything. <laughs> no, no, it's it's like three hundred baud. I don't, I don't know what the equivalent like is, but yeah. But, uh, but they had a lot of great information about abusing protocols. They uh, the, they abused the shit out of dot net, which was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, seeing that happen. Um, and talking about uh, very interesting ways that you can uh, do some DDoSs. And, uh, well, I'm not going to go too much into that So it that sounds territory. like overall you guys had a good time, oh. even though it was a crazy-ass long trip. Yes, I definitely recommend, if you're in the area, to check it out. Uh, it's not super expensive. They treat everybody, like, super great, like catering and all that fun stuff. And there's a lot of there's a wealth of information. Uh, while there isn't the hallway stuff that you would typically get in other conferences with multi-tracks, multi you do, um, there's a huge party. Saturday night, which we at least made it for that, and that was that was also Paul's birthday, so I made sure to get him. Uh, I do hear Paul got a little Paul, Paul liquored had fun. up. Paul had fun. Yeah, yeah. ain't that right, Paul? <laughs> I think he had fun. Yeah, he's shaking his head. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I, I definitely recommend that if you're in the area, check it out. And if not, just head over to the website because I believe that they're posting all the presentations um, as well as a lot of video from it. So. Um, uh, one in particular you might want to check out, and, and I'm not sure if I call BS on it or not. It's really interesting, but there was a ninja that showed up. Ah, okay. Yeah, and um, he used a text-to-speech reader on his computer to give his presentation, and it was all done to like, I don't know, like like not MIDI music, but you know your your, your generic like Matrix-like hacker music. Right. I don't know. So and it was talking about root kits and back doors and BIOSes and wireless cards that are still on even when there's not plugged into that. So we're gonna we're gonna have stretch. to see if anybody can actually put his talk into you know practice. The, the one thing that kind of like you're like ah uh, really really and then all of a sudden it's like and here's the proof. Beer and parties, and it turned out that B E E R and P A R T I E S were like acronyms for like something hidden in a ward or uh, AMI BIOSes. 
that were like a secret back door. All uh, right. It's, it, well, whatever. Hey, listen, it was one of the most entertaining talks I've ever been to. It's not every day you go to a hacker conference and there's a ninja. Yes, he had the katana and uh, was very enthusiastic. I wonder how we got through TSA with that one. I don't know. We drove. Anyway, so yes, that um, was Daycon. So Daycon, and uh, it's not the the con isn't Daycon because it's a single day it, because it's held in Dayton, Ohio. Oh, yeah. I, I just saw the little light bulb go on. Yeah, right here. Bing. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So um, we want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this uh, this episode of Hack Five. Um, Squarespace has been a huge fan of the show uh, pretty much since the first season. 1X03. 1X03. My favorite episodes. Of course. Except for this one. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to thank the guys for sponsoring the show, and we're also uh, holding a contest. Um, We've been doing a lot with the LAN parties, and we don't have a page for the LAN parties. Mm Mm-hmm. Can't find out any info on the web. I mean, you can go to the forums and stuff like that. So what we want you guys to do is we want you to go sign up for a free trial at squarespace.com and create your own Hack5 LAN party page. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the best one and use that as our LAN party page. Awesome. So we're going to take your creation and use that as the center focus for upcoming games, uh, scores that have been posted so from wanna, previous LAN so parties. So we got to get a leaderboard up in there. Leaderboard Obviously action. A blog, all built into these things. Exactly. And Squarespace is a publishing system that anybody can figure out. Build a blog, portfolio, any other kind of website, from large businesses to you know your grandma's teeth falling out, you know website. Anybody can use Squarespace. So uh, highly recommend that you guys check it out and we want to thank him for sponsoring the show definitely yeah check it out so i, I can't wait to see what that, that's going to end up looking at i was playing with it and it really blurs the lines between application and website it's yeah. one of those like premier web 2.0 like like you thought you knew what web 2.0 i know is until you start like hovering over and it's like gradients and uh, if you're I, and like, the big thing the other big thing is if you're a fan of statistics mm-hmm. on who visits your website and aren't Really, I mean... Yeah, like, uh, seriously, Google, like, step up your game with your analytics because, uh, wow. Yeah, Squarespace has got you It's not Splash either. I, I don't know what's it's making it so cool. It's all Ajaxy. Yeah, I had no idea Ajaxy was like a... Now, if only, oh, yeah. if only uh, JavaScript would run as fast as, like, C code. I mean, that's coming, then. That's, that's the next thing. Maybe one of these days. Yeah, sweet. Um, we want to do some Rehack 5 stuff, don't mm-hmm. we? Uh, of course, you guys send us a lot of questions. You guys post a lot of great info on the forums. Sometimes we like to feature that stuff. Sometimes we want to talk about that directly on the show. And it's something that we want to do more of here on future episodes of Hack 5. So definitely, if you've got interesting questions, uh, like tunneling your NFS traffic through another location in your university so you can download giant BitTorrents. That yep. one's come up. Um, hit us up. Feedback at hack5.org. Questions at hack5.org. Either of them. Go to all of us, and we sick the engineers on them. Make sure that we get you guys some decent answers. And, and it's, and it's usually same day. Uh, I, I've got to be honest with you. The, the, a lot of the questions that I've seen come in mm-hmm. have been answered in the same day. Yeah. Um, the, the NFS traffic one, you know, a couple others. So That's great, because then we like, you know, we're like, hey, did you, get, did you see that one? What are you thinking? And then, you right. know. Yeah. And then by the time, you know, somebody checks their email, it's already been answered. I love it because it keeps us on our game. Yeah, it does. Yeah. One of the most interesting things, okay, well, I mean, the, the fruit's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm putting an end to it. I know. I know. I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> are getting sick of the fruit. <laughs> ah, that's okay. No, I'm doing, like, tune in next week. I'm doing Linux clustering to, uh, to crack passwords. And then I think after that, we're, like, doing a whole huge thing and, like, doing some Swiss Army tools for networking. Anyway, yeah. um, so one of the things that I was asked is, hey, you brought your pineapple to TorCon and Daycon too. That was a lot of fun. Um, and it's not plugged into anything. And it's, yeah, because it, there's a battery in here and everybody's like, well, what battery are you using? I know that it didn't explain much of it. Um, one of the things that you can do is pick up, and, and I'll show you right here inside of my pineapple here. I actually ha- I have just a, uh, this is real simple battery pack that you can pick up. From uh, from like Radio Shack or a lot of other like SparkFun has these a um, whole bunch of different retailers. These are really cheap, like two dollars. Uh, and four AA batteries will power the fawn in my test for about two hours. If you're looking for something a little bit more robust, uh, I forget the name of the gentleman on the forums at the moment. But um, if you head over to the Yasager forums, there are or Yasager forums, there are <laughs> there is a huge thread about battery packs for the fawn. And uh, one of them is this uh, Radio Shack RC pack. 
uh, that's actually made for like remote control cars, which is kind of neat because you know it, it was I think it was like eight dollars, mm -hmm. and I think this is a great find because this little battery pack, and then you just plug it into the wall and uh, get your recharge on. So definitely better for the environment. Don't want to be wasting a whole bunch of like four alkaline batteries every two hours. Right. If you just want to like, and two hours, I've, I mean, for my testing. You're not going to be sitting there for. Well, no, I mean, in a longer pen test, we're actually working with a guy that's, we're putting together a, uh, a lithium ion battery, totally rechargeable, allow you to run for like, I don't know, like a day or two, oh, something wow. like that. And then we're also looking at the same kind of stuff. Um, we've got info on USB, charging uh it turns out there's a lot more efficiency if you replace the voltage regulator that's stock on the fawn he only needs 3.3 volts to run but he uh, the voltage regulator on here drops everything down a little bit anyway even if you give him 3.3 it'll only give you two something so so we'll have all that info coming up yeah, for yeah. You guys so we're, we're trying to build the lightest battery possible for the fawn keep it uh I'm, I'm hoping to get it under five ounces for some other fun stuff later cool yeah uh, we also want to mention uh, another show that we have, uh, you know, here on Revision Three, uh, that being Epic Foo. We met them in, in New York. That was a lot uh, of fun. Up at the, uh, the Live Dignation. This week, uh, we come to terms with the failed U.S. economy and give a few suggestions to stay ahead of the collapse. Uh, we also take a look at the new Android-powered G1 phone, hunt for space invaders in a global art project reality game, and demo a few online tools to track where your favorite bands are playing. The FU of the week is served by the creators of Ask a Ninja, the only web series that is equal parts funny and dangerous. Brand new episodes of Epic Vu release every Tuesday at 6 Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Be sure to check out the lower two-thirds right here for revision3.com slash epic foo. Yep, day before us, awesome stuff. Yep. Gotta check it out. Definitely. Yes, love that show. It's like, it's, it's a little... Yeah. Yeah. To see a bunch of jump cuts of you would scare me, mm -hmm. but Zadi, not so much. Uh, okay. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. Well, maybe now that we're HD, we can actually do pans and stuff that Ooh. don't look like crap when you... So if you're <laughs> if you're in the Virginia area and you want to be a production assistant for Hack5, <laughs> hey, hey, give hey, us hey, a call. Hey. <laughs> Check out the jobs page on <laughs> Hack5.org. Um, Freaknik, we will be there this weekend. Yep. Totally excited about that. And it's not just Paul and Darren, not just Paul and Shannon, the entire... Crew We're bringing everyone going. down. Mubix uh, is coming Mubix, down. Mubix, Chris, Christine, Paul, myself, Darren, Shannon. I'm probably forgetting somebody. That's, I, there's That's some it. guy named Eric on the set. Mitch Albright's going to be there. Yes, Signing he will Signing autographs, be. Mitch Albright. Come on down. Um, Nashville, Tennessee. Woo! That's not scripted. I know. That's cool. So uh, that's going to be a fun 10-hour drive with this sweaty mother. And, uh, and You're we, sweating and, more than I am. Dude, it's 85 degrees in here. Let's get the AC on cut this episode. You All done? Right. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Anyway, until next time, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to send your questions over, questions at hack5.org. Check out the forums and all the other fun stuff. And remind you, trust your motherfucking techno best. Get you some. <laughs> Unmic yourself and go somewhere else. I've got to do a show with you and I'm not standing here in your stink. Oh, come on. <laughs> Welcome to Hack 5. This is the show where we bring you your weekly techno left time, Darren Kitchen. I'm Matt Lester. And woo, is that rank.